You are right, everybody, Shock16, back once again for the Renegade Master, back once again for a new video. That's right, I'm actually making some fresh content for the first time in absolutely ages. Um, so yeah, just a big hello to all the new subscribers as well. I've noticed that I've had a few new subscribers. I've lost a few of you as well, which, you know, is always good in it. But yeah, if you're new to the channel, hello. So yeah, um, just something a bit different, um, a bit more random nostalgia. So yeah, if you haven't seen the other videos that I've done in this series, check it out. Um, I did one on annuals, like retro annuals from the 80s and 90s. And I did one on my old aftershaves as well. But this one, as you've probably already seen from the thumbnail or the title above the video, or is it below the video now? I always forget below, isn't it? Um, this is going to be about my old phones, mobile phones, cell phones, for those of you outside of the UK. So yeah, um, mobile phones, I'm from a time, <laughs> I'm from a time, a land before time, I'm from a time before mobile phones. Um, so yeah, well, mobile phones have been around since the 80s, haven't they? But there was like massive bricks and... Only kind of like, you know, like business yuppie types and stuff like that used to actually have mobile phones. There wasn't like an everyday accessory. Whereas now everybody and their grandma has a bloody mobile phone, don't they? Whereas it was kind of an exclusive thing to have a mobile phone. Until the late end of the 90s here in the UK when Pay As You Go came out and Pay As You Go revolutionised the whole mobile phones and stuff like that because it made them affordable because before then it was only like contracts and contracts weren't the same as contracts that you get now where they're affordable and you can make your own kind of price plans with you know data allowances and three minutes and yeah and all this stuff it was literally everything was just a broad expensive tariff and then you paid for your calls on top of those tariffs so yeah you had to have money back in the day if you was on a contract so when page ago came around obviously it made it more affordable and more accessible to people and then the mobile phones took off and like I say the rest is history because now everybody has one don't they so yeah but my first mobile phone was bought for me on my 16th birthday in 1998 so yeah do the maths and you could probably work out how old I am now, but yes, 1998, 60th birthday, and the first phone that I ever got was this bad boy, and yeah, it's that. I've got to be careful of the aerial though, because the aerial was actually broke, and I'm just kind of balancing it on. It's, it's a rubber aerial, <laughs> but it's a fixed one. It's not like a telescopic one, it's just a solid one. Well, it was solid until I broke it, but yeah. Luckily enough, I managed to find it, so I balanced it on so I could <laughs> put it on. So yeah, this was what I got for my 16th birthday. It is the Philips PH301. So yeah, this was, as you say, pay as you go. And yeah, I absolutely loved this phone when I first got it. I mean, this was... I was going to say top of the range, I don't know if it was top of the range or not, it was just a mobile phone which wasn't because my mum has got, had a mobile phone which was older than this, older than this and it, it's like, it, that was like an house break. So this in comparison was a lot smaller and compact compared to that one. Um, yeah, features on this phone, you could call somebody and it did have text messaging but when I first got this phone for my birthday you couldn't text on it like the, it's got the text feature on it but when you used to press the text feature on it it used to say this feature is coming soon or something like that um, not currently available I'm sorry for the cars going past again as well I don't know why every time I get the camera out you should know this by now it turns into the M1 outside anyway so yeah Sorry if you can hear noise. Back to the phone. So yeah, when I first got the phone, the feature wasn't enabled yet. It was like it had the feature, but you couldn't actually text. All you could do was call, make calls, receive calls, and then 
about three months later, then they rolled out the text service and yeah, then texting became a thing, didn't it? And yeah, that saved us a lot of money as well when we were teenagers because it, it just, that became the new norm, texting. I mean, do people even text anymore? Is te are text messages still a thing? I mean, the only reason, the only person that I really text are my parents nowadays because you just use WhatsApp and stuff like that, don't you? Or Facebook Messenger, it's all... Do you know what I mean? It's very different nowadays, isn't it? But yeah, this was what started it all off, 16-year-old me. So now there is a few phones that I've had that I don't have any more to show you, unfortunately. So I'll kind of gloss over them or I'll put a picture up or something like that as I'm talking about them. Um, so yeah, I think it's only fair to mention them because this is like my mobile phone journey. <laughs> Um, but yeah, obviously I only have a few handsets left to show you. Um, so after that phone, I was working, I actually used to work for one-to-one, -one, the phone company. So, and one of the perks of that job is, you know, you got a discount on one-to-one -one stuff, including phones and stuff like that. So the phone I got after that was, I can't even remember the name of the phone. If I can't, I should have done some research possibly before I started recording this but yeah if I can find a picture of it I'll put it up there and it was I think it was one that was exclusive on the one-to-one -one network because you know phones used to be like that um, I, do they still do exclusive phones to exclusive networks nowadays or I don't know but yeah so I had a phone from one-to-one -one and it had you could change like the plate around the keys you couldn't take the whole facial off it, you could just take like the, a play off that went around the keypad and you could change the colours on it and stuff like that. So yeah, it was a little bit of a step up from that. And, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, on this phone, the text used to scroll horizontally across the screen. Like, they used to automatically, instead of like reading it downwards, the text used to come across the screen like that. Whereas on that phone that I got from one to one, they it was a different text, but it's the normal text formula format even, should I say, that you're used to, of reading it from top to bottom. Um, yeah, so then after that, um, I upgraded to the Nokia, um, you know, the, it's, it had different, I think it was like, call something different, whatever network you had it on, it might be something different. I had it on orange, so it was the 402, I think it was, but it was the main Nokia that everybody had, and this was the one where you could change the face plates on it and stuff like that. Oh, going back to this phone, and the phone before it as well, so on this phone, you could not change anything on it, you couldn't customise anything on it, the only ring tones you had on it was um, the what was inbuilt on it, you've got no gains on this or anything, it was literally make a call, receive a call, send a text, receive a text. That's all you could do in it, on it. Um, I'm not even sure if you could change the operator logo on it either, but yeah, that's it. On the one-to-one -one phone, you could, um, like I say, change the face, well, the plate around the keys, and you could change, I think you could, like, edit, or you could change the operator on it or something like that, change the operator logo on it. Anyway, so, but the Nokia, that revolutionised things, like I say, that phone was probably one of the best selling phones ever. Um, that Nokia, Nokia ruled during that era and, yeah, you could change the face, front face plate on it, you could change the operator logo on it, you could put custom ringtones on it, you could actually download sheets off the internet and stuff like that and you could type them in on your own and of course it in it introduced the world to Snake, the mobile phone game Snake. Classic. So yeah, everybody had that phone but I lost my phone and I can specifically remember how I lost it. I left it on a bus. So yeah, there you go. And then after that I upgraded to the 32 10, which was the next one up where you could change both the front and the back plate, basically the same. And I think you might have got Snake 2 on that one. Um, I'm not sure what happened to that phone, but yeah, anyway, after that phone, the natural progression after the 3210 was 
the 5310. So yeah, this was basically the same phone, but just so much smaller. But you, yeah, there wasn't a lot different about it. And I can't actually show you the phone because I don't have the answer. But what I do have is this. <laughs> so this is the, um, yeah, the front fascia and the back fascia. This is what you could customize and take off and stuff like that. So this was the standard one that it came with. So that just gives you a clue of what the phone kind of looked like and how big it would have been and stuff like that. But yeah, it's just it's just like the casing for it. Um, so yeah, and as you can see, I got this on the Virgin Mobile Network. And this was the only phone, the first and only phone that I ever got on that network because that network was kind of new at the time and their mobile phone coverage, network coverage, was absolutely shocking. It was terrible service, so yeah. <sighs> yeah, I don't even know what happened to that phone either, so... Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what happened to that phone. So yeah, I never went back and I never got another phone on that, on Virgin Mobile again. It was kind of a mistake. It was, yeah, just one of those things. But one of the things that... Um, is good about this phone is I still have the receipt for it from and I've, it's an Argos receipt so I actually bought the phone from Argos if they didn't get it actually from the Virgin Megastore or like that but yeah I got it from Argos and I don't even know if you can see that can you work out the print on there but you, if you can see there was three items I collected that day all to do with this phone and so yeah it's got the date on there so the date was the 29th of the 7th 2002 when I got that phone so yeah it would have been a probably like a cheap phone probably yeah I don't think it would have been the latest phone at the time but it cost me 99 pounds 95p <laughs> but the thing that makes me laugh is so the other two items like I said so you've just seen the uh, standard facias and stuff like that but I bought and it says the other ones was Black Dragon face, Fascia and Tattoo Effect Fascia. Now, the Tattoo Effect Fascia was, think of like the Tribal Game Boy SP, kind of like that design, so it was like a silver fascia with a tribal design, very early 2000s, late 90s kind of design, that tribal tattoo, like Celtic tribal stuff. You know, people used to get it tattooed all up the arms and stuff. It was very in, very popular at the time. But what I can't remember is Black Dragon Fascia. I have no recollection of that fascia at all. Because like I said, I always had the tribal one on it. All I can think of is my girlfriend at the time had the same phone. So maybe that was for her or something. Because I really can't remember ever having a black dragon fascia on it so I can't even remember it buying it like I say if I didn't have this I would never know but yeah it's cool that I've still got the receipt in the box for it what also made me laugh that it was also in the box for it was um this card so yeah I don't know if it'll focus there you go and what this is is um a free phone logo so yeah you could um you used to do like spreads of these in the back of like magazines and stuff like that or maybe you got one of these cards with your phone and you phoned it up and you could change the operator logo so yeah let's see if I can get it to focus again but yeah oh there you go so we've got a dragon a Celtic and a Scorpion so you could change the operator logo to that and the best thing is I never even used it look because it's still got the sh strip on the back does anybody want it? Does anybody want to change the um, operator logo on their phone? Let me know. I've got a card to let you do it for free. <laughs> but yeah, that was all the rage back in the day, weren't it? So, yeah. Then from there came a load of um, kind of flip phones. What do you call them? Like, I don't know. This kind of phone, basically. So this type phone. So little diddy phones. And the, yeah, you know. The flip phone, the classic flip. Um, 
So yeah, this wasn't the phone that I got after that. I had another Samsung after this, which was better than this one. Um, again, flip flip. It, it, it's funny, isn't it? Like. In the late 90s, early 2000s and that, it was like, it was all about phones getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Whereas now we've gone the other way, aren't they? Phones are getting bigger and bigger and bigger again now. We, I mean, we started off on the brick and we reduced them into a little size and now they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger again. So we can have big screens on them and stuff like that. So we can stream video and stuff to them like that. So yeah, I had a, a more kind of up to date one than this. This is actually um, one of my parents, it's either my mum's or my dad's, I can't remember who lent it to me, but basically um, I broke my phone once and I had no way to keep in contact with like work and obviously friends and that, so they temporarily lent me their phone and this, like I said, I don't know which one of them it was that lent me this, but yeah, there you go. I've still got that handset, so, but this actually wasn't my phone, but... It was a phone that I used for a very short while whilst I was in between phones. So yeah, I don't know what this is. Does it tell you the model number anywhere? It doesn't. It just says Samsung on it, so yeah. Oh, ah, I've dropped it. Worth millions, that is, and I'm dropping it. But <laughs> yeah, if anybody knows what that phone is, there you go. Work it out yourself, find it on thing if you're interested. Um, so next, so you know, after the flip phone, this is what I, I love this phone, this is actually missing the aerial as well, this used to have a fixed kind of rubber aerial on it, god this is grimy as well, I did fish this out of a loft though, <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is a Motorola, what's this, the Motorola, oh, I don't, again I don't know, if, if I can find the model number on, online I'll let you know, but yeah it's the Motorola, Again, Diddy, but what I liked about this phone is, it didn't flip, it rotated. So yeah, how cool is that? So yeah, you could, and you can rotate it all the way around, look. So yeah, doesn't matter how many times you rotate it. But yeah, that's basically how you used to answer the phone, you just used to, hello. But yeah, very cool phone, um, and those beady eyed of you can see that it says Virgin Mobile again there, and you're probably thinking, but Shops, you told us you only ever had one phone on the Virgin Mobile network, and yes, that is correct, I wasn't lying to you, I only had one phone on the Virgin Mobile network, this was originally on the mobile, like when I bought it, it was as standard on the network, but because there was a reason behind why I got it on that network, but I never actually used the SIM card that it came with, the original SIM card on this. So this phone has a function on it where you can go to your mobile operator and you can actually switch your, if you had like a certain code or something like that, you could select it from a list of different providers and you could just put whatever SIM card you wanted. Basically it was like an unlocked phone but yeah, it was just a lot easier. You didn't have to go anywhere and get it unlocked. You, like I say, if you just had the right code, you could switch your provider and put it straight on. You just select, literally just had an option in it where you just scrolled to it and you just, yeah, flipped it. So I actually used to use this on, on Orange. Um, most of my phones was on Orange networks, um, yeah. Which kind of pissed me off actually when they got bought out by EE because I had so many years, like loyalty years with Orange that I used to get so many, do you know, like different perks. So like when the smartphone era rolled around, I used to get so many like free apps, you know, like, um, can you remember like Deezer? I think it's still a thing, but everybody uses Spotify, don't they? I don't know if people use Deezer. So you used to get De free Deezer, I used to get like free sporting apps on it and stuff like that. I think Spotify actually, I did get free Spotify for a while before it was EE, but yeah, when EE um, took over, I lost all my loyalty um, like stuff, all my loyal loyalty perks and stuff like that. I just lost them all. Whereas, yeah, 
that was the good thing about Orange. The longer you stayed with them, the more they used to give you. Like, like I say, they used to give you like loyalty kind of perks on your contracts and stuff like that. They used to love it when it was Orange. But yeah, anyway, so that's that phone. It's a ro like I say, rotation phone, Motorola. Yeah, don't really see Motorola's around anymore, do you? Hello, Moto. You remember that classic ringtone? Oh yeah, one thing that I also liked about this is the LCD display on it was blue. It was like a neon blue. Can anybody remember those um, watches that used to be quite kind of popular in the 90s um, called Timex Indiglo watches? Where you used to press the button on the side and they used to light up either a green or a blue or an orange or something like that. Well, that's what the display on this used to remind me of. It used to have like a neon kind of blue hue to it. And like it used to, like the text on it used to remind me of an, like an old VHS recorder or something like that. You know, like the, like digital kind of like writing, LED dis, is it LED display on it? Sorry, it caught, like LED display on it. it used to be like blue as well. Yeah, cool phone this was in the day. But yeah, like I say, missing the aerial. Um... Then what did I get after that? I think I had a few more phones as well, but I can't remember. I've had so many phones during my lifetime. Yeah, I can't remember them. If I can remember them, I'll put up some pictures or something at the end, give them an honourable mention. But yeah, another phone I have here is... Uh, oh yeah, so after that phone, I think I went on to like a Sony kind of Ericsson phone, stuff like that, and... Yeah, that was a pretty good phone, but I can remember giving that phone away I think I gave it to my sister's ex-boyfriend that phone because I got this phone and I actually bought this phone off eBay as well that's always a gamble in it especially like back in the day when it used to come to electronics and stuff like that but yeah it was this phone so what's this phone this is the who's this made by SPV the SPV E650 and again it's on the orange network can you see that? So yeah, it's nice and chrome there. It is mess missing the hang up button, the button to hang up. I mean, you can still hang up like the, I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear that? So it still like makes the clicky noise, so you can hang up, but the buttons just disappeared. Is that focus? Is that even focusing? I hope you can see this, folks. But yeah, so it's like a nice chrome. But the party piece on this was, um, hang on. Da -da, can you see that? I did it the wrong way, didn't I? Look. So you can open it, close it, and it's got a full quirky keyboard. Because this was my first phone that was web enabled. So before uh, you had like the internet, so this was proper internet, but it wasn't internet as you know internet now on your phone. But before this, we used to have like, was it WAP or something like that, which was like web access I don't know what WAP stands for actually I'm just making it up um, but yeah everybody should be able to remember WAP it was like a really shit version like a really watered down version of the internet basically and you could probably like download ring ringtones and pictures for your phones and stuff like that off it at the most and it was slow it was dog shit it was like worse than a dial-up connection so yeah but like I say this was the first actual web enabled one like this so yeah this was a time before apps and stuff like that you didn't get apps or anything like that no social media or like that you could but you could basically just it had a, a web browser on it basically like I can't even remember what browser it's got on it now but you could like access Google and stuff on it like that at the most and yeah camera phone it wasn't my first camera phone though because I did show you that didn't I uh, my flip phone, even though I would say it's a better phone than that, I'm not sure if it had a camera on it or not. Uh, but the Sony Ericsson one that I mentioned that I had before this did have a camera on it. So yeah, this had a camera on it, but this also has video capability. This was my first video phone as well that did like video capacity. But there's no storage card. You can't. There's no SD card or anything like that. No external storage on it. You only had the storage that you got like in the in the phone basically and it wasn't a lot of storage put it that way I think it was less than a gig or something like that so 
you couldn't do like you couldn't do your vlogs on this phone, put it that way. But yeah, I used to love this because like I say, QWERTY keyboard revolutionized text messaging. <laughs> Right, and then after that phone, I can't remember. I had an, I had another phone as well, and I can't remember what that phone was. But I, I can remember I broke my phone, and again I was between phones. I was in urgent need of a phone. So a good friend of mine at the time gave me this phone. It is this is another Sony Ericsson one. So this was like the um, it's a bit like the phone that I had before the phone I've just shown you. <laughs> But this would have been like the um, more up-to-date version of it, yeah, so she just gave me this phone, um, yeah, basically she upgraded her phone and she gave me this um, one so I could basically keep in touch with people and stuff like that. So yeah, this is the Sony Ericsson W810i, again, on orange, like I said, most of my phones was on orange, and yeah, this is the Sony Ericsson. Can you see that? Again, if it, if it will focus, it's not going to, is it? But yeah, this is the Walkman phone. And this, ladies and gentlemen, ta -da! external storage, the first phone with an SD card. So yeah, and this is like, basically, was like an MP3 player phone. So this was chopped full of music as well, because it wasn't my phone originally, like I say, it was just given to me. Um, yeah, my friend had like just filled it up with music tracks and stuff like that and it opened me up to a lot of new artists and stuff that I didn't used to listen to. So like people like um, uh, Kill Switch Engage and Korn, uh, 36 Crazy Fists and stuff like that, that kind of music. Yeah, she was very into that kind of music and it was all on this phone. I imagine it's still on this phone. If I had, If I could charge it. I could get, in fact, because it's got an external memory card on it, I could probably get all the tracks off it, couldn't I? I could just um, put it into my laptop, actually, and rip all the tracks off it, so yeah. But yeah, that was a nice little helping hand that I had. And then, after that, I had um, a phone called a Toco, a Samsung Toco. So the Toco was kind of on the edge of smartphone, just before that, that era, just before the smartphone came out. So... It was, yeah, it was kind of on the edge. But then, I stopped having pay-as-you-go mobile phones because this was the era now where, yeah, like I say, contracts totally changed. Um, where it was, um, yeah, pay-as-you-go used to be a big thing. Not many people have pay-as-you-go now, do they? It's all contracts. Because like I say, contracts now, they are so customizable and stuff like that. I mean, you can have, like, just SIM-only contracts now, can't you? So... If you don't want to upgrade your, your handset, you can just go SIM only and get a really, really cheap contract now, yeah. So you can they're basically tailor-made to what you want on your phone, don't they, now? So, yeah, the smart way to go now is just to get a phone on contract because it, it's just cheaper and stuff like that. And, yeah, but my first phone, my first contract phone was... And... Yeah, now this was a phone that, bloody hell, this was such a popular phone. And again, this is one of those phones that nobody has no more. It is the Blackberry. The Blackberry Bold, I think it's called, yeah. Wi-Fi certified as well, so bloody hell, was that, I mean, it was actually the first phone as well that was Wi-Fi enabled, but yeah. So I think my Toco, the Toco that I had before, before the Blackberry was um, also internet accessible as well. So I think that might have been my first proper truck. Bloody hell, that, that shut the room, that did. It was so loud, shut my windows. Um, but yeah, I think that was the first proper, proper internet phone I had. And then obviously the Blackberry. So there's, there's the answer again. Can I get that into the light? There you go. Quirky keyboard, physical quirky keyboard, none of this touchscreen lock. <laughs> but yeah, the I forgot how small this phone was as well. I remember this phone being much bigger, and then I got it out of that box, and it was like, really, is that what it was? But yeah, so this was, like I say, this had full internet capabilities. Um, 
But was this before apps as well? You didn't get apps on Blackberries, did you, I don't think? Can't remember, no, it's so long ago. I mean, what does this say on the box here? Mobile Phone Award, again, can you see that? Mobile Phone Awards, 2009. Yeah, so it was the best phone in 2009. Yeah, but yeah, the Blackberry, everybody wanted Blackberry, and again, it's on Orange Network, again, that probably. But this phone, yeah, everybody wanted the Blackberry Bold when it first came out, and I got this phone, and I've got to say, it's one of the worst pieces of shit I have ever had. It, I'm glad that I never ever, do you know what I mean? It was my first contract phone, I was so excited about it, like I said, it had full internet access and stuff like that, like proper internet, and yeah, and then, oh, BBN, BB, what is it, Blackberry Messenger, and stuff like that. Oh, and it was such a letdown. It was great for like the first few weeks or something like that that I had it. Then it just totally let me down. Everything used to freeze on it. It used to have like a glitch on it where it would lock you out from... So like if somebody used to text you a message or something like that, or email you or something like that, it would lock you out from accessing your own emails and stuff like that. And you had to like pull the, do like a battery pull on it and reset your phone just so you could open it and it was so regular you was forever battery pulling this phone and yeah the web browser on it and stuff like that was always freezing it was a bag of shit basically this put me off ever having another blackberry phone so yeah i'm glad that these like the kind of fad of the blackberry kind of died out really fast in it it was one of those flash in the pan everybody's got blackberry and now nobody has a blackberry so yeah Thank God for that, because in my experience, it was a piece of shit. Um, so yeah, and then after that came this smartphone era. So yeah, we're getting to like the modern day stuff now. So I'll try and fly through these because like I say, this is kind of modern era kind of stuff now. But yeah, this was smartphones as you know smartphones. So app, do you know what I mean? You get all your apps and stuff like that, social media and stuff like that all came to your phone. Although, did your black? I think I used to be able to access Facebook and that on uh, my BlackBerry as well. Again, it seems like so long ago now. I mean, it was about what, two thousand eight, twelve years ago now. It's bloody hell, twelve years ago. Where they go? But yeah, so my first smartphone was this, the HTC Desire S. So yeah, this was my very first proper smartphone, and you know what? This phone didn't put a foot wrong. And yes, story about how I got this phone. So my BlackBerry packed up and I was phoneless again and I was in need of a phone. And somebody who I work with, they kept on getting phones sent to their house. So obviously somebody who had a contract got this handset, but they must have put the address down wrong and it kept on going to that person's house. And every time she would send the handset back and yeah this happened loads and loads of times and I just said to her the next time it happens don't send it back I said just keep the phone and I'll have it off you for a reduced like for obviously for a, um, a reduced price and that's exactly what she did <laughs> it happened again so she kept it and she sold the phone to me so I got this phone for dirt cheap and like I say it was brand new at the time as well so this was only just come out so yeah this was basically this would have been somebody's upgrade but like I said she always sent the phone back she said it do you know I mean they've had enough chances to have their phone back basically so and in the end she just got sick of sending them back so I actually ended up with this one which was good and yeah this phone didn't put a foot wrong it was just a case of I ended up getting a new contract after this and yeah with that contract I got upgraded and after that, I went to the Samsung Galaxy route, and that is basically the phone that I have stuck with all through, like, up to what I'm using now. So, yeah, I'll just go through it. So, after that, I upgraded to the gang, the gang, the gang, the gang son, <laughs> the Samsung Galaxy S3. I love this phone. It was white in colour. I had the, yeah, white. Coloured one, I don't know if you could get the S3 in different colours, I imagine you can. 
But yeah, I don't have the handset to actually show you, I just have the box because the phone I actually gave to my niece and my niece don't even have that phone anymore so God knows where the phone is nowadays but yeah, that was my first Galaxy and then obviously I've had upgrades for every, every two years I get an upgrade now so after that it was the Galaxy S5 Again, another phone that never put a foot wrong, um, but I did kind of like the S3 more, I don't know, I just kind of like that white coloured phone, and yeah, then after the S5 it was the S7 Edge, um, yeah, that is really heavy as well, so the handset is actually inside that box I would say, um, <laughs> but yeah, so the S7 Edge, was it better than the S5? Technically yes, but I'm not sold on the S7 Edge. I had the S7 Edge. So you can get the S7 and you can get the S7 Edge. And Edge basically means the screen curves around the edges and you get the Edge buttons or whatever they're called. But those Edge buttons are a bag of shit. Because the way you pick, so where you pick up your handset your fingers are always touching the edge button, so you're always selecting things you don't want to select. Like you always, like if you've got quick keys on and stuff like that, and it's always selecting different, app, opening up different apps and stuff that you don't want. So you end up disabling them, and then it's like, well, if I'm disabling the edge functions, then what's the point in having the edge phone? I might as well just have had the standard S7 Anta. So it was an alright phone, but. I preferred the S5, and then after the S5 was the S9. S9, good phone for a bit until they started rolling out updates for it. Um, yeah, this had a lot of teething problems in the early days. Um, kind of, as I was coming to the end of the contract, I think they kind of nailed it. It started like running really smoothly and stuff like that, but... Yeah, when I first got this phone on launch and stuff like that, um, yeah, a lot of the apps always used to freeze. Some of them it didn't even open and until they rolled out. Like There were certain apps that I used to have on the S7, obviously, that I just transferred onto this, and a few of them didn't even work. I had to wait for Samsung to roll out updates before they would even run on the phone. It was, yeah, it was so weird. I've never had a phone like that before. Like, I normally just transfer stuff over, over to the new phone and it works straight away, but for some reason on the, on the S9 it had so many problems with apps freezing and crashing and closing down on me and stuff like that, and like I said, stuff not even working for until they rolled out updates. They eventually got it right, but yeah. The other thing about this, though, is why I needed a new phone, um, which is I'm glad I got my upgrade last year, um, was... Because I dropped the phone while it was still attached, I was charging the phone I, and I dropped it and basically I knackered up the charging port on it. So yeah, this phone was a bitch to charge after that. Honestly, it was an absolute nightmare to charge this phone after that. So a, a lot of the times I would go to my phone thinking I've charged it and realise that, hang on a minute, it hasn't charged and that's because the slightest little nudge or something like that on the cable and it would stop, honestly it was an absolute bitch to charge so yeah unfortunately this sunset was just dodgy after that yes and then last year during the first lockdown I um, was ready for my upgrade again so I went for, and this is the phone that I'm using now so there it is, that's my phone, that my current handset and that is the Galaxy S20, so yeah, the 5G, we're now on 5G, aren't we? Yeah, I was thinking did the um, S9 off 5G, but it didn't, did it? So yeah, 5G, S20 is my current phone, and so far, brilliant. Again, not put off, this hasn't put a foot wrong yet, um, I've had, like I said, I've not had none of the TV issues with stuff freezing or it like that um yeah samsung seems to have calmed down with the updates as well on it so maybe like i say that was something to do with that um that era of phone the s9 that's why they kept on rolling out so many updates 
all the time because it always seemed like every other day you had an update on the S9 and I think that was, like I say, it was because there was obviously problems with getting certain apps and stuff to run smoothly on it but yeah, since I've transferred over to the S20 yeah, I've had no problems with this so spot on so there we are guys, that's all my phones, well most of my phones from that I still have left from um, over the years. Yeah, I'm not one to throw things away, as you can see. Um, some handsets have been thrown away over the years, some have been sold that I can't show you. And they're just ones that, yeah, I, I usually, when I get a new phone, I usually just put the old one in a drawer or in a box somewhere and it just gets forgotten about. So that's why I've got so many left. So. Yeah, but this is where it all started with. This first phone for my 16th birthday. That's where it all started from. So yeah, sorry if this has been a long ass video. A lot of these nostalgia ones all do go on for a bit, so yeah. Um, but I hope I've ignited some nostalgia within you from like phones from then to now. But yeah, I just thought I'd show them to you. So yeah, there you go. Just a little bit of random nostalgia in it. And... Yeah, that's it. So, I'll see you in the next video. Sati bye.